Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. He moved on the waters, he called to the deep, then you coaxed up the mountain from the valleys of sleep. And over the eons you call to each thing, awake from your slumber and rise on your wings. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You swept through the desert, you stung with the sand. And you gifted your people with the law and the land. When they were confounded with idols and lies, you spoke through your prophets to open their eyes. Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You sang in a stable, you cried from a hill, then you Whispered in silence when the whole world was still. And down in the city you called once again when you blew through your people on the rush of the wind. Spirit. Spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You sang in a stable, you cried from a hill, then you whispered in silence. When the whole world was still And down in the city You called once again When you blew through your people On the rush of the wind Spirit, spirit of gentleness Blow through the wilderness Calling and free Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You call from tomorrow, you break ancient schemes from the bondage of sorrow, the captives dream dreams. Our women see visions, our men clear their eyes, and with bold new decisions, your people arise. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind 
on the sea. Well, welcome to the worship of God at First Church Ipswich, and here we are on Pentecost Sunday gathering together, so grateful for the gifts of the Holy Spirit and of understanding, and indeed our whole service is celebrating the, the gift of understanding each other and praying for it and lifting up different themes about it. So welcome. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Amen. I have a message for you today about understanding. And I want to start with a story from my friend Jan, who is in a study group with me through the Franciscan Center for Contemplation and Action down in New Mexico. And Jan tells me this story. He told it to our whole group this week about a time when he was a boy, and he's Belgian, and he and his brother were able to get tickets to travel all over Europe on a train. You know that month-long ticket when you, where you can go wherever you want? And, he and his brother with their backpacks and the way Jan puts it, like their hair out to here, were off on the trains, these teenagers having a wonderful time. And when they got to Greece, they decided to go in two different directions and just take a few days to travel on their own. And Jan found himself hiking in Greece down a long road and then he saw this path to the right and he got this intuition to go that way. He was getting hungry and it had been a long day and he was thirsty and a tired, his huge backpack. And he walked down this path and then he saw a gate and he just had this sense like, go through that gate and he walked up another path. And when he got to the end of the second path, there was this big, huge hotel under construction. It was all being built, all new, very fancy. And he didn't think anyone was there, but he thought, just knock. So he knocked and he waited and he knocked and he waited and Finally, the gardener came and let him in. And by then, it was gloaming, the, uh, the, the dusk was coming, and uh, it, it, the gardener could tell that Jan was hungry. And the two of them had this moment where they realized a lot of things. They realized that they didn't have a common language because Jan didn't speak much English yet, and the gardener didn't speak any English. And Jan speaks French and German and Dutch from Belgium, but the gardener spoke Greek, and so they couldn't talk to each other. But they could be two traveling souls in the world together. And the gardener did this extraordinary thing. When Jan talks about it, it's almost like he can't even, still can't believe this happened. The gardener brought Jan into the hotel kitchen, this huge cavernous kitchen. 
and started cooking supper for him. And he started making all of this Greek food, you know, rice and spanakopita and stuffed grape leaves and avgolomono av and all of this extraordinary food. And he cooked and cooked and cooked and they would stop when something was ready and they would eat it together and laugh and use sign language and communicate in whatever ways they could, but really the food was their language. And that they had been hungry and they were filling, they were so grateful to be getting full was their language. And the gardener just kept making another thing and then the two of them would laugh and eat that and another food would he start to make. And it was this, the way Jan describes it, this glorious night of cooking and eating and enjoying and they stayed there together until dawn. So it's Pentecost and the wind is blowing through this beautiful trail here in Ipswich at the reservoir. And we get the chance to celebrate this feast of a day in the book of Acts as Luke writes it, when the believers were all in one place, all of the disciples in this room and this wind came blowing through and raced around them and suddenly, like it looked like fire too over their heads and suddenly they started to speak and it wasn't clear what their language was. They spoke in these, these tongues of, of communication and understanding and, and, and glory. And the, the people who'd come to Pentecost there in that community, there in Jerusalem, had come from all over the place. They were f travelers from all over the world for this Feast of Weeks is one of the ways we describe it in, in the Jewish culture that after the, the seven weeks after Passover, you would come to give thanks to God for the gift of Passover and for the gift of the Torah. And you'd come to stay up all night studying Torah and then at the, in the morning you would go to the Western Wall and say your prayers or, and you would bring the first fruits of your harvest. You'd bring the, the, all these different beautiful first gifts of fruit from the trees. And there were, there were several different ways Pentecost was honored in Jerusalem in those days. But the thing that always happened was people had come from so many cultures that they couldn't actually talk to each other. They had all these religious symbols that they all understood, but they didn't have speech. And the thing that's so cool about the way Luke describes this story in the second chapter of the book of Acts is that they understood when those, when those believers were speaking, when, they were, when the fire and the wind filled them up and they were speaking to each other, everybody understood them. And everyone was shocked at, at the, the curiosity of how they could understand. How could you understand someone you didn't used to understand? And how could, you, how could their language suddenly make sense to you? And how did it work? What was the what was the practical way to understand the mystical experience that had happened in that, on that day of wind and fire and, and beauty and wonder? It's such a beautiful question, really, that, 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 that suddenly they understood each other. And I love that understanding is one of the gifts of the religious traditions. You know, that where there was mystery, suddenly there's kind of this simple knowing, or where there was confusion, suddenly there's clarity. I, I love the gift of understanding as, as the feast of this day, which we celebrate on Pentecost, and as the gift of the, of the Holy Spirit. And for Jan, that understanding was this, this, this holy infinity of like laughing and tasting and eating and breaking bread and sharing and they didn't need a single word. Now the word for Holy Spirit in Hebrew is ruach, and it actually has three different meanings, all from the same word. One is spirit, Holy Spirit, and one is breath. Like when I breathe, that's my ruach. And when God breathes, that's her ruach that, that kind of links up very nicely with the word spirit. And then the third word is wind. So Holy Spirit in Hebrew means spirit, and it also means breath, and it also means wind. Like as if God's breath is the wind, and as if the Holy Spirit, this part of our Trinity, is the, the wind and the breath, the breath of God, the wind of God. And I love it that that holy gift is celebrated on this day when we have our Feast of Understanding, when we are so glad that there had been misunderstandings and no common languages, and then suddenly everyone understood each other in this gorgeous, gorgeous and glorious way. For those folks in Jerusalem, it was that they heard this sound, this, this, this babble, this speaking in tongues. And for Jan, it was that he was offered these plates, radiant, fragrant, heat steaming from them. So my neighbors on Mineral Street 
have been building gardens. It's it's these these wonderful women, Jill and Allison, and they've been building cairns and planting flowers and painting the windows with great messages. And I was walking by them last week and they were out working on their gardens. And so I, I told them I loved them and I lived in the red house around the corner and, and um, I was so happy to meet them because I'd been watching what was happening with their front steps and their garden. And, and yesterday they came by and knocked on my door. They found my red house that I'd told them would be around the corner and they said come and see our garden now and so I went down around the corner to their house and there they were you know um, Jill was building these um, glorious bits of art that she'd had this idea to do she'd she'd made a little dollhouse and she decided to make it into a museum and she set it up on a pedestal that turned and she'd found these bits of Modigliani's art in an antiques magazine and she'd found like all these little b photographs and snapshots, taped them around tiny boxes and put them in her little museum and, and she said, this is my mini museum, come sit right here on this carpet, on this bucket and look at my museum and, and meanwhile Allison was like carefully balancing stones and building cairns and she had begonias going in and, and lavender and it was just a, such a stunning little postage stamp patch of a garden these two women were making and there was the museum the tiny museum made out of corrugated cardboard with tiny little scraps of art in it and you could sit there all afternoon and just enjoy it and I think that that's another part of common language isn't it you know like a, a glorious little garden you just breathe it and you you know that there's love there and that we're connected to each other the people who built it the people who walked by and smiled the the creatures who flew by and perhaps, you know, pollinated some of those flowers or ate some of those things pollinating or sipped a bit of nectar. And the same with art, really, too. Art's a common language, right? You, you don't need to have words in a certain idiom. You can just look at a piece of art or hear a song and know how connected we are, even across species, really. Like here we are listening to birds. The, the red-bellied woodpecker just sang a minute ago. And the, the connections, the understandings among us are extraordinary in this heart of God, this breath of God, which blows across the reservoir and into our hearts and our lungs and our bodies and our lives. So for Jan, there in Greece, in his story that's at least a generation old, there at this empty hotel at dawn, you know, after they were so full and glad and they laughed so hard and they'd eaten so much that they didn't know quite what to do next, except that Jan was very sleepy. And the gardener said, you know, I can't give you a room because I'll get fired, but you can sleep outside on that bench. And so Jan went out because he was tired and he took a little nap on the bench. And guess what happened while Jan was napping? The gardener cooked breakfast. <laughs> And when Jan woke back up, there was this huge, heaped-up pile of beautiful Greek breakfast for the two of them to share again, which they did with great laughter. And Jan says he will never forget it. I was thinking, in conclusion, on this feast of understanding and this celebration of how much we all have in common and how much, if we search for that, even across the species and even around the planet, it makes the world so much better and so much cl more clearly holy and so much more easy to honor and treat each other well, all the creatures of the earth. I thought in conclusion I'd sing you this song that Peter Mayer wrote to the tune of Heifredal, which is that old Welsh tune, such a lovely tune that was, you know, was written to mean grace and peace and beauty and welcome. And Peter Mayer has written a song called Blue Boat Home, which goes to the tune. And when I, when I cherish this song, I especially like to think of the way Walt Whitman says when he talks about understanding and how much we long to understand each other. He says that we're constantly seeking the spheres to connect them. You know, seeking the spheres to connect them. And that's what this song is about. So it goes like this. 
Though below me I feel no motion Standing on these mountains and plains Far away from the rolling ocean Still my dry land heart can say I've been sailing all my life now Never harbor or port have I known Why the universe is the ocean and the earth is my blue boat home. Thanks be to God. Amen. So let us begin the pastoral prayer by saying together the Lord's Prayer. And you know, I noticed at Mary Helen's funeral how many different ways we say it. There were Greek people there who said it in Greek, and there are people who say uh, trespasses, and people who say debts, and there are people who have the long ending, who grew up Protestant, and people who have the short ending, who grew up Catholic, and there are people in recovery who always say trespasses. It's great. So say it your way, as loudly as you wish, and I'll say it my way, and it'll be fine. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh, holy God, hear our prayers this day. With the songs of the birds in our ears and the wind in our hair, as we give thanks for the feast of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost and how you gave this gift of wind, breath, spirit to us that we might understand each other and how much we need it, how easy it is to misunderstand, both because we don't speak try very hard to listen to each other and because some of us are so angry or fists bent and so we ask your help again to make us again your Pentecost people who try to understand and seek to understand and see the common language of a meal shared or a garden planted or a cairn built or a bird in a tree or a blue boat home sailing on a planet give us the gift of understanding, O oh God, in our deepest prayers that we might draw close to you and each other. Help us when we walk on the earth to understand it. Help us when we sail on the sea to understand it. Help us when we speak to an enemy to try to understand them. Help us when we speak to a friend to understand them. We are so glad for your challenge to be your understanding people, your opening people, your people who keep trying. 
And we ask for your blessings in our trying, your inspiration, your wind to blow right across us and remind us that you're here helping us. We pray for all those who suffer and are very much broken with misunderstandings. And we think especially of Israel and Palestine today. And we pray for all those who are sick. And we think especially of people living with COVID today and cancer and dementia and brokenness of all of its forms. And we pray for those who are so tied up with enmity in any place of your world where there's war. We pray for your understanding, your feast of peace, your feast of our good work to open our hearts again and our minds and our imaginations. Help us to plant the gardens of joy that will welcome and celebrate and invite all of our neighbors and friends and strangers and enemies to come again and delight in them. And we thank you for that holy day when the wind blew through and changed the whole world. May we still be changing it now. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace, which knows no end. Amen. Beloved family and friends, may the peace of the winding road be under your feet. May the peace of the warm wind be at your backs. May the peace of the wild birds be in your ears. And may the deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you, body, mind, and spirit, this day and every day. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.